Thank you. Welcome. We thank God for all of you. And it's powerful that God is real. We can't live a life whereby God is not real. It will be a disaster. We normally say God is both immanent and transcendent. We want to pray so much. Just as in the days of Daniel, God was seen in politics. God was seen in the systems because of his children. And I would like to assure you that Jesus will be seen real from today in your real life. So that the faith we, are, we practice will have a meaning. God bless you. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati Nairobi. Jesus loves you. We have to share the word of God on making things to happen. Message number four. I will share something ritual, but it will be very helpful. Last time we said, for you to make things happen, we need to overcome and make have a start. Overcome fear, overcome Satan, overcome people that are being used by the evil one. Overcome your personal limitation and also overcome areas of deficiency. There are times what hampers you is not, nothing else than areas where you need to improve. That's very important. Now we want to go to another part. Uh, is putting faith into action. Putting faith into action. If you go to Genesis 24, when, when Abraham was sending his servant to get a wife, for uh, Isaac. Bible says Abraham was old enough, advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed him with everything. So he got his oldest servant and said, please, put your heart under my thigh, and I will make sure you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife from, for my son. From the daughters of Canaanites. You know, this is an issue whereby now somebody is going to get a wife. You are, he's not going to be your wife. He's wife of somebody else and you should not make a mistake. And the servant had to clear the faith. For you to overcome, to make things happen, you must clear your faith. If you force yourself, push yourself ahead with the doubt with alternatives, with opinions that are not, not clear, you are likely to have disaster, accident, failure, and be open to attack. I say, please, however much you want to run and run and walk, you need to clear your faith. Because in Genesis 24 verse 5, this servant had to clear alternatives. The Bible says, and the servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me. That's a need to be cleared. Instead of going with that, perhaps, you need to drain it. Perhaps the woman will not be willing to come and follow me in this lad. Must I take your son back to the lad from which you came? But Abraham said to him, be aware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord God of heaven who took me from my father's house and from the lord of my family and who spoke to me and swore to me saying to your descendant I give this lord he will set his age before you and you shall take a wife for my son from there if the woman is not willing to follow you then you, you will be released from this oath only do not Take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh. Abraham of his master. And so You see, clear everything. Go with clear facts. Go with clear faith. Do not, do not get out there with, with faith that it's yet having alternatives, alternatives. And if you have several alternatives and you put resources in them, you are likely to lose a lot of money and time in the wrong things. So, to make things happen, you need to 
put faith into action clearly. Another area of faith in action, if you check, if you check this servant, when he went to, uh, to the land where uh, Abraham set him, you realize that this person cleared everything. Uh -huh. If you go to, uh, to verse 10, the servant took 10 of his master's camels and departed for, for all his master's goods were in his hands. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, the city of Nahu. You know, this man, even before he carried the camel, there were 10 of them, and there was a special one to come back with the wife. That's faith. And he also carried dowry to pay. He is coming back with the wife for Isaac. Such kind of clarity will give way and room, pathway, clear way to the anointing. Anointing cannot work unless you clear yourself. Anointing is a product of the finished work of the cross. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is a spirit moving to glorify God in actions that are beyond human mind or beyond whatever. And it's good to know the Holy Spirit cannot work where there's doubt. And therefore this man took or whatever and the Bible says uh, the Lord and he made his camels kneel down outside the city by the way of water. At the evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. There's what we call the timing. You know, this man want a wife. You must be where wives can be found. You know, some people don't locate where you can succeed. You don't locate where you can get favor of a certain good that you want. The Bible says this man made the camel to kneel down outside the city, not just anywhere, but by the well of water at the convenient time. Which time? Evening time. The time when women go out to draw water. Look at several things. One, the place. Two, the time. Three, what you didn't want. He was at the right place at the right time for right need. The need could only be, the need, what's the need? The need is a woman. He is in the well at the evening time when women go out to draw water. I want, I want a wife. So what I want is a woman. And the Bible says, and then he said, Oh Lord God, my master, of my master, Abraham. Please give me success this day. Show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I start. I'm starting in the right place. By the well of water. I have the right goods. These girls are... are Isaac want a girl. And these are the right girls. You know, for you to succeed, you must be in the right place. Right time. And where goods that you want can be available. If you want people of this nature, be where they can be available. And don't waste time. Avoid delay. And this man said now, Lord, I'm in the right time. And behold, these are the women. And what I need is one of them. And he said, oh Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day. And show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I start. By the well of water. And the daughters of men of the city are coming out to draw water. The season, right season. Daughters of men. This is the time they are coming. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say. Now these are a company of women. Now look at now the specific. Uh, Isaac is not looking for an old woman. It's a young girl for marriage. And that's why when this man is praising, let it be that the young woman 
Young. Not my woman. Young. To whom I say, please, let down your pitcher that I may drink. And he says, drink. And I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. Now, the right time for women, but not all women qualify. There's the age. You, you can't ask for any woman. What about if you get a 50 years old? He said, no, I, there's a place you need to use your brain because God has made us with the capacity to identify some truth. He does not need to tell you this is a glass of water. You already know it. God does not need to tell you the right woman to be married is young. You know it, no, we marry young women. That area did not need prayer. He said, God, among these people, the young woman that I was for a drink, and she proceeds further to request that he gives drink to the, to the camel. Let it be that that's the one you have chosen for Isaac. And the Bible said, uh, the daughters came, uh-huh, now let it be, whatever. And then it happened, before he had finished speaking, that is verse 15, that behold, Rebecca, who was born to Bethel, son of Mucha, wife of Nahu, Abraham's brother, came out with her picture on her shoulder. Now the young women, woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. Look at the qualities, the qualities. You, don't, you already know. You know, some, some young men just go for any woman that pleases you in the street. Look at the qualities this person is saying. Rebecca came out. Who is Rebecca? It is it's not a stranger. It's not a stranger. That's why it's good to marry in a fellowship whereby at least the person is not a stranger. It's not good to, when you're reaching out for business, whatever, you just admit new people, new people. No. Start from known to unknown. Then, very beautiful, young woman, virgin. No man had known her. And she went and did and did and then give water to the, to the, to the camera. And later, uh, look, when you are want to make things happen, there's a place you get. When you get to the place where you know, this is where my, my business, this is where I should start making some progress. You need to have what we call a strategy for what you want that has a space in it for God to confirm. The strategy that this man used had a space for God. He said, God, the young woman whom when I ask her for water, she will go further and request to give water to my ten camels. Let it be. She is the one you have appointed for Isaac. And Rebecca came. And I said, give me water. And the woman said, I can also give water to camel. You see, it's a strategy that has a Pace for God to confirm. It's not good that all what you do is within your strength. It's good to have somewhere in your business, somewhere in your choices where you can confirm. Surely, God is for this choice. So that later, if you get into problem, you'll be able to start firm and say, God, do something. Lord, remember you read me this way. Remember later, Rebecca had a problem of bearing children. And instead of Isaac traditionally requesting for a maid, like the way Abraham and Jacob did, Bible says Isaac prayed and said, God, open the womb of my wife. Why? This is a woman whose life, whose choice, whose uh, marriage was confirmed by you, Lord. Why do you need a strategy that has space for God to confirm? Because later you can tell God, God remember you confirmed and God will do a miracle. Because challenges you come, but that area of confirmation will always make God responsible and committed to your choice, to your program, and to your businesses. That is very important. And you are saying by God's grace, uh, you need to put faith, faith into action. And at the same time, you obey the direction that God has already given. You see, 
this person went to a place where by faith is allowed. You know, Abraham is saying, no, don't take any woman from Canaanites who did this. No, sometimes you don't need God to tell you. It's already clear that you can't go to this place, work in that place. It's clear. It's clear. It's clear. And that's why we need to make things happen by God's grace. Now, another thing is, mm -hmm, bide yourself with the two things, goals and levels of achievement. Let your feelings and your character be bowed to God with the time frame. Because sometimes the way to overcome resonance and the way to improve yourself is to command your life to achieve a certain goal at a given time and you concentrate so much and you declare it's a must, it's imperative that you achieve, it will produce you as an achiever. You may not be born an achiever, you may not be born, you could be, could be looking very fragile, very weak, crazy. But when you bind yourself with goals to achieve, and you declare, I must achieve. Several things will happen. One, you arise. Another thing, you will change. Another thing is that you will move in a swifter way. Another thing is that you will be commanded by the rules or the instruction of the decision. Yes, that is very important. If you are going to make things happen, that have certain goals, have levels of achievement that I cannot compromise. That will help your Lord. Another thing is discern the direction to take. If there's anything certain and evil people will fear in you, it's capacity to discern. Discernment is ability to see through. You don't just see things here. See through. You can see through. Discernment is ability to see through in a way that you can separate light from darkness. You can identify somebody who is lying and somebody who is speaking the truth. You can be able to separate things and get obtain what is necessary. You are able to know a, a spirit, a demonic power behind somebody or something and, sep and overcome. You are able to detect the will of God early enough you don't waste time. You don't stagger around. You don't waste resources. Discernment is ability by God to see through, to avoid wasting time, and to avoid getting entangled or defiled. You really keep the race, and you keep also the lane of your race. We will continue next time. I hope God is helping you now. As we embark on this serious topic, we are saying we must make things happen. I just want to remind you of our project in Nairobi, 10,000 Sita Church Project. We are inviting you for a great covenant giving. We want to clear a 10,000 Sita Church in Kagudo Road and get there very soon. We are paying 340 million Kenya shillings. It's around 3 million US dollars. And I welcome you by the power of God and by the light of God to join and be a partner. I listen you a discovery, a kind of ability to see how such a great altar will raise a star in your life. Get the details, work with us, and if possible, let me there on November 10th this year. It is in Kaguda Road, what used to be double M, opposite Comrade Jackson. By the blood of Jesus, we are getting through. And you are partner and you celebrate with us. God bless you. God keep you.